Welcome back to Life Camp by LifeShare University of Healing, Week 3. We don't always remember everything we experienced in our past, but within the subconscious mind lies every emotion, every experience, and every feeling that we have ever experienced in this life and our past lives, and each one affects our present life somehow in some way. It could be positive or it could be negative. When we exit from the womb of our mother, we are born with only true divine love. We are pure and innocent. We are not born with negative emotions such as hatred, jealousy, prejudice, or unforgiveness, but born pure and divine coming directly from the love of the Creator. When specific experiences take place in our lives, we learn behaviors, and these behaviors become layers and layers toppled upon our pure divine being. This is what is known as the mask of the ego. Life is not about being punished for things from our past that we perceive were wrong. It's about learning the lesson that comes along with the experience. Life is all about choices. We can choose to change or we can choose to repeat the negative patterns that have been laid upon our innocence. What happens next depends on the choices that we make. Now, can we change the past? No, of course not. But we can become aware of our own lives, change the reaction to a response, and learn from the experiences. When we begin to see the difference between reacting and responding, we begin to change ourselves with less worry about how other people are acting. We become wiser, not only for ourselves, but teach our future generations how to be wise as well. So how do we find our triggers to those reactions? There's a few different ways we can explore, but the first thing we must do is tell ourselves that we want to change. No one else can help us change. We must want it. It's like the saying about becoming a butterfly. You must want to fly so much that you are willing to give up being a caterpillar. We must become aware of our actions to find the triggers. We have to remove any weeds, so to speak, from our garden. Not by pulling just the top of the weed out so you can't see them. We must pull them directly from the root so they no longer can grow back. This course is going to help you do just that. Dig up the roots. I'm not saying this is easy. It's actually damn hard. <laughs> But it is possible. How do I know? Because I'm living proof. So let's start digging. The Archangels once gave me a quote, and it goes like this. If one piece of the puzzle is missing, the whole plan will come tumbling to the ground. When we think about tending to a garden and pulling the weeds, we pick them from the soil or pick the dead leaves from existing plants and flowers so our plants can grow freely. If we don't pick off the dead leaves, all the nourishment and energy will be stolen and the good leaves will not flourish. The roots of the weeds will strangle the roots of our plants and they will never ever grow. Just the same, we must do this in life. When we begin to pull the weeds, which are the emotions and feelings from past experiences that no longer serve us, our life becomes much clearer. We start to see that certain things that we used to do no longer satisfy us. We start to see that people we thought we liked or were like are not who we really want to surround ourselves with. We even find that some family or friends are not as supportive as we thought they were. The strengths that have helped you to succeed are also your greatest emotional triggers. When you feel someone is not honoring what makes you special. 
when your brain perceives that someone has taken or plans to take something important to you and, to, and wants to take it away from you, then your emotions are triggered. Just as we have discussed in the last lecture about our brains going into protection mode. You react with anger or fear, then you quickly rationalize your behavior so it makes sense. You may lose trust in the person or the situation. You may lose courage or react in a way that could hurt your relationships in the future. The key is to catch yourself reacting when your emotions are triggered then you can discover if the threat is real or not. This slide includes a list of some of the most common emotional triggers, meaning that you react when you feel as though you are not getting or will not get one of these things that are very important to you. Review the list. This worksheet can also be found in your course supplementary materials. Some of these needs will be important to you. Others will hold no emotional charge whatsoever. To start controlling your emotional triggers, choose three items from the list that most often set off your emotions when you don't get these needs met. Be honest with yourself. Which three needs, when not met, will likely trigger a reaction in you. Identify the needs that you hold most dear. You can find this emotional trigger worksheet in this lecture's materials and it's critical to note that the needs are not bad. Going back to the weeds in your garden which are past experiences that no longer serve your highest good. The reason you have these needs is that at some point in your life, the needs served a purpose for you. For example, your experiences may have taught you that success in life depends on maintaining control and establishing a safe environment and having people around you who appreciate your intelligence. The more you become attached to these needs, the more your brain will be looking out for circumstances that threaten your ability to have these needs met. Then these needs become emotional triggers. At this point, you must be the judge. You need to find the truth of the situation by asking yourself a few questions. Are you really losing this need or not? Is the person actively denying your need or are you taking the situation too personally? If it's true that someone is ignoring your need or blocking you from achieving it, can you either ask for what you need or if it doesn't really matter, can you let the need go? Do you have to eliminate or limit your time with the person that is denying your need because it's turning into mental or emotional abuse. Without consciously acknowledging the need that is triggering the emotional reaction, we become a slave to that need. On the other hand, if we honestly declare our needs, that we had expected people to treat us in a particular way and had hoped events would unfold as we had planned, then we can begin to see life more objectively. From this perspective, we are freer to choose our reactions and turn them into responses. As soon as you notice that you're emotionally reacting, you have to shift your emotional state in order to think through what your trigger may be. Therefore, practice the following technique to help you make the shift. The first step is to relax. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth as you release the tension in your body. Detach from the situation and clear your mind of all thoughts. Center yourself and drop your awareness to the center of your body just below your navel. Feel yourself breathe. 
feel the air go in through your nose as your stomach rises and as your stomach falls down. This helps to clear the mind. Focus. Choose one keyword that represents how you want to feel or who you want to be in this moment. Once you shift your emotional state, you are free to examine if someone is actually taking something away from you or not. You can then ask for what you need or let it go and move forward. Keep breathing and think of your three keywords that you chose in the emotional trigger worksheet and you will be able to outsmart your brain. To understand how you're going to help yourself, you need to know your stressors. Make a list of the situations, concerns, or challenges that trigger your stress. Take a moment to write down the top 10 issues you're facing right now. If you must, pause this presentation. You'll notice that some of your stressors are events that happen to you while other stressors come from within yourself. Strategies to manage external stressors include lifestyle factors such as eating a healthy diet, being physically active, and getting enough sleep, which help boost your resilience. Other helpful steps include asking for help from others, using humor and laughing, learning to be assertive, and practicing problem solving and time management. Some examples of external stressors are major life changes, our surroundings, workplace stress, or even in our environment and social activities. Now, not all stress stems from things that happen to you. Much of our stress response is self-induced. Those feelings and thoughts that pop into your head and cause you unrest are known as internal stressors. Examples of internal stressors include fears, which is uncertainty and lack of control, beliefs, attitudes, or opinions. You may not even think about how your beliefs shape your experience, but these preset thoughts, which are also considered learned behavior, often set us up for stress. Consider the expectations you put on yourself to create a perfect holiday celebration or advance up the career ladder. How does it make you feel just thinking about it? The good news is that we have the ability to control our thoughts. The bad news is that our fears, attitudes, and expectations have been our companions for a very long time, and it often takes some effort to change them. So be patient with yourself. It takes time to heal. Strategies to manage triggers or stressors include challenging your negative thoughts and changing them from negative to positive by using relaxation techniques, trusting in a close friend or family member, or even journaling. When we write things down, we start to see the situation a bit clearer on what happened and how it escalated to what it did. Just think of it like texting yourself a message and being on both ends. All in all, Forgiveness is the key to letting go of hurtful past experiences. While watching Oprah's Life class with Alanya Von Zant as her guest, I finally understood the definition of forgiveness. Alanya describes forgiveness as this, letting go of the hope that the past could be any different. This does not mean that you're agreeing with what the person did, nor are you saying it was right to do. Forgiveness says that you will no longer give that person your power, nor give the situation any energy to keep it alive. When we stop giving energy to something, it eventually fades away. Just like a light switch, when we switch it to the on position, it's going to light up. When we switch it to the off position, it stops sending energy and the light bulb goes out. It works the same way with us. Forgiveness means we free ourselves from the self-made prisons of the past. 
We stop wishing things could have been di different and begin to see the lessons in every one of our experiences. This gives us the, abil the ability to move forward towards our own future in a positive way. So how do we find the root of what's going on? Ask yourself why to everything you wonder about. When we continuously ask ourselves why, we eventually get to the root of the problem. The answers may not be clear right away, it could take a day, a week, or even a month, but you will eventually find the answers that you are looking for. Like I said, it's not easy, but it is possible. You just have to want to get off the ground and fly. In your supp supplementary materials, a worksheet, you will find a worksheet that's called Why. Utilize this worksheet to help you find the answers that you are seeking. Remember, we have to get to the root of the weeds and pull them out from the root before we can get rid of them completely. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me at lisa at lifeu.me or post a message to me on the student message board. Have an awesome day. Namaste.